At University of Virginia Health System, we're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. Patients considering knee replacements are faced with a steadily increasing number of treatment options. Which one is best for you? Today we're speaking with Dr. James Brown. He's a fellowship-trained orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knee and hip replacements. Welcome to the show, Dr. Brown. So what are some conditions which would prompt or warrant someone to even consider getting a new knee or a knee replacement? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Melanie, for having me on the show. I appreciate the invitation. Uh, Knee replacement surgery is really an option for patients who have advanced arthritis of the knee, so advanced wear and tear of the knee joint, and and have failed non-operative treatment. So non-operative treatment is always the uh, first-line treatment for knee arthritis, and knee replacement may be an option for those patients who have uh, failed those treatment options. So what are some questions that people should ask the surgeon when they're considering to have a knee replacement? Well, you know, I think the first and probably the most important question that uh, patients should ask their doctor is whether or not they're a good candidate for surgery. As I mentioned, knee replacement surgery is an option for some patients with advanced arthritis who have failed non-operative treatment, uh, but certainly not all patients with knee pain need surgery. I think furthermore, uh, for some patients with advanced medical problems, knee replacement surgery may not be a safe option. So it's important to really uh, delve into these questions with your surgeon. It's also very important to discuss appropriate expectations in terms of outcome uh, with your surgeon before you decide to proceed with knee replacement surgery. You know, I think uh, probably the most common question that I get from my patients is whether or not the time is right for them to have surgery. You know, there are many factors that are important to think about when it comes to planning a knee replacement surgery. Patients' general health, their time away from work, some family commitments, the time it takes to get better afterwards. These are all things that I think patients want to discuss with their surgeon. I think most people decide the time is right for them when their hip or knee pain prevents them from living comfortably and uh, interferes with their daily activities. But at the end of the day, it's really up to the uh, individual patient to, to make the decision about whether or not surgery is right for them and if the time is right to proceed. What conditions might preclude somebody from getting knee surgery? I mean, if they are a heart patient or if they have diabetes, is there anything that really makes somebody not a candidate? Certainly medical uh, conditions such as you uh, list there are uh, concerns. What we try to do is uh, address any modifiable risk factors patients may have for a a poor outcome. Some factors that patients come into the office with uh, are uh, already optimized. We can't do anything about it, and then we discuss the risks of surgery. But there are a lot of factors such as as diabetes, as you mentioned, and patient weight, uh, for example, smoking, uh, that we know are risk factors for poor outcome and are areas that we can potentially intervene ahead of surgery to improve the uh, chances of the good outcome. Dr. Brown, are there some non-surgical options available? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, the treatment of arthritis really starts without surgery. Uh, Pain relievers are often the first choice of therapy for osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, Simple pain relievers such as over-the-counter Tylenol uh, and non steroidal anti-inflammatories such as Motrin, uh, which is ibuprofen, or Aleve uh, can reduce pain and swelling in the joint. There are more potent types of pain relievers that are uh, prescription strength, non steroidal anti inflammatories, and those can be uh, discussed uh, with, uh, with your doctor as well. Uh, exercise and physical therapy can help strengthen the muscles around the knee, and this can uh, lead to reduced pain, swelling, and stiffness. Uh, braces can also be a helpful treatment option for certain types of arthritis. You know, many people with osteoarthritis, uh, particularly the knee, are overweight. Uh, we know that simple weight loss can reduce the stress on the weight-bearing joint, such as the knee, uh, and that uh, given the physics of the hip and knee joints, you end up putting uh, about three to five times your body weight across these joints throughout the day. So even uh, the loss of a relatively modest amount of weight, say 10 pounds or so, uh, this can really redu- uh, reduce the stress that the joint sees substantially. So about 10 pounds of uh, weight loss can result in about 50 pounds of weight reduction on the uh, knees. So losing weight, I think, is really key for certain patients. And then finally, there are some uh, other treatment interventions that we have, such as injections that can also help. Steroid injections in particular have been shown to be uh, very effective at providing uh, uh, pain relief and reducing inflammation. Tell us about some of the major differences in outcomes between different surgical approaches. Mention what the surgical approaches that you use in somebody getting a knee replacement. Sure. So there are a number of different uh, minimally invasive techniques and various technologies that have been developed, such as computer navigation, custom cutting guides, and robotics uh, that have been uh, implemented in knee replacement. I would say that uh, to date, there appears to be 
both, uh, both pros and cons to each of these technologies, uh, but I think really more research is required to determine what advantage, uh, if any, these may offer. We offer these approaches for certain uh, select patients in, in uh, certain situations, but we really can't claim any major long-term differences in outcomes at the moment. Uh, I think if there are benefits uh, between these different techniques, they're likely to be relatively small and not dramatic in most cases. I think uh, probably the major improvements that we have seen in the past decade or so have really been in the areas of anesthesia and pain management. Uh, the advances we've seen in these areas have really uh, led to a rapidly uh, improved recovery and a quicker return to uh, function. Tell us a little bit about the knee implants themselves, Dr. Brown. Are, what are, I mean, are they going to set off alarms at the airport? Are people expecting full range of motion once you've done this, once they've gotten a new knee? And you've, you know, replaced all the ligaments, you know, reattached all the ligaments and gotten everything back in working order. What can they expect from those implants? Sure. Well, to answer your first question about setting off metal detectors, most patients with hip or knee replacements will set off metal detectors. There's no security card that patients need to uh, carry with them, although we do provide a card for them if they'd like. Uh, and patients should expect uh, to uh, set off metal detectors. The newer type detectors uh, are less of a problem, uh, but certainly the older uh, metal detectors um, in many of the smaller airports uh, are, uh, remain an issue for folks with uh, artificial joints. There are so many people now uh, in the United States that do have uh, artificial joints that this has become uh, fairly routine uh, for screening uh, at airports and so on. The other issue about what to expect after surgery uh, is a good one, and uh, I would tell you that each patient is different. We know that the best predictor of post-operative range of motion is preoperative range of motion. What that means is that patients who go into surgery with really uh, compromised function, who have a very stiff knee, uh, have l uh, lack of flexion, tend to, uh, while they may have some improvements in those categories, tend to still have some limitations. The patients who go into surgery with, uh, functioning at a very high level who have good range of motion tend to preserve their range of motion after surgery as well. The ultimate goal of knee replacement is to reduce pain and improve function. Uh, and the goal of knee replacement surgery in many cases is not uh, solely to improve range of motion. And what about after that? How long does a new knee last? Is this something that they can expect they're never going to have to worry about again? Can you still get pain in a knee that's had a replacement? Certainly. In terms of the life expectancy of knee replacement, uh, we know that a knee replacement is a mechanical device, just like your television, your microwave, your car. And like any mechanical device, parts can wear out, they can break, and they can fail. The failure rate of knee replacement is about 1% per year. What that means is that patients have about a 90% chance of getting a, t a good 10-year result with their knee replacement. That number drops down to about 75 to 80% at 20 years. So about 75 to 80% of our patients, we expect to get 20 years more out of their knee replacement. A lot of knee replacements do start uh, wearing out uh, between year 20 and year 30, and that's often where we see uh, redo surgeries come into play. So patients should expect that if they live long enough, uh, they may need further surgery on their knee. Dr. Brown, in just the last two minutes or so, give your best advice about people considering a knee replacement and why patients should come to UVA for their knee replacement. Sure. Knee replacement is an excellent, oper uh, is an excellent operation. It's very successful in most patients. Uh, most patients are very satisfied they had the procedure. Uh, it is important, though, to make sure that you're a good candidate. And I think this it requires a uh, good, thoughtful discussion with uh, both yourself as well as with your family, uh, your loved ones, and your surgeon as well. You certainly want to try all non-operative measures uh, before uh, jumping into knee replacement surgery, and it is important to have a good expectation about uh, what knee replacement surgery can offer for you. So it's a very individual decision uh, that each patient needs to make for themselves. Here at UVA, uh, we are unique in that we're the only Joint Commission certified joint replacement program in the area. We were awarded this designation by the Joint Commission for our commitment to quality and our use of uh, evidence-based clinical practice guidelines. We have a comprehensive a joint replacement program here at UVA that includes a dedicated team of nurse coordinators, uh, outpatient and inpatient nurses, and physical therapists. And I think importantly, all of our surgeons are fellowship trained in joint replacement. What that means is that we have uh, extra training, and we're really true specialists in knee replacement. You know, those of us doing knee replacement and hip replacement uh, only do joint replacement surgery here at UVA. So I think, as with many things in life, you know, volume matters, and uh, we are one of the volume, uh, highest volume centers in Virginia. 
Uh, finally, at UVA, we're involved in a number of uh, uh, innovative endeavors and pioneering research that's been recognized nationally. So I think we have a very special place here and a, and a very special team uh, to get to patients through the operation successfully. Thank you so much, Dr. James Brown, fellowship-trained orthopedic surgeon with the UVA Health Systems. You're listening to UVA Health Systems Radio. For more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening. Music.